G'day guys, I'm Matt Brand and this is the 2021 Suzuki Swift Sport. Now the 2021 Suzuki Swift Sport has just been released and Suzuki Australia has just given me early access to review one. On the surface, the changes seem relatively minor for this facelift, but there are some really big new additions. So in today's in-depth review, we're gonna see what those are. Now, as always, we will start by taking a look at the exterior of the Suzuki Swift. Then we're gonna move on to the interior and see how it drives. And finally, we're gonna end on should you buy one. And if you are new to the channel, please do go down there and hit the subscribe button. I release an awesome new car review every single week and sometimes I get early access cars just like this one. And if you do enjoy the view, please do go down there and hit the thumbs up button. It really, really helps the channel out. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. Starting with the front, and the front is largely unchanged from the pre-facelift version. However, there are the addition of a couple new paint schemes, including this flame orange with a black roof. It looks stunning. I really do love the headlights of the Suzuki Swift. They're tinted and they just look absolutely fantastic. These ones are completely LED, LED daytime running lights, low beams and high beams. And I think the whole headlight cluster just looks absolutely fantastic and then down below those are the halogen fog lights and they're not the brightest fog lights purely because they are halogen which is a much older technology than led but i'm not going to complain too much about that unique to the sport is the carbon fiber bumper looking thing which you know it's not real carbon fiber but hey it looks pretty cool and then down the bottom is a lip spoiler that again is made of that carbon fiber material and it just looks fantastic. Overall, the front hasn't changed very much, but that's not a bad thing. It looks absolutely fantastic. And then moving on to the side, I love the 17 inch diamond cut polished aluminum wheels. They look fantastic and suit the car so well. They look really premium. The side is also where you really get to see the flame orange with the black roof. It's a beautiful contrasting look and I think it suits the car so well. Of course, down the bottom, we have more fake carbon fiber door sills, which again, I don't mind. I think they actually look pretty cool, better than just standard black plastic. And otherwise the side is not much to report. It looks very much like a hatchback. With the rear, we have the obligatory, but relatively tasteful little boot spoiler, which does help to break up the otherwise very boxy design of the Swift. The rear lights are a little bit bug-eyed looking to me, just maybe a little bit on the big or bland side. I can't quite put my finger on it, but they are functional LED and at nighttime anyway, they do look really cool. Down the bottom again, we have fake carbon fiber in this big rear diffuser looking thing, which is not functional, but again, at least it looks pretty cool. My favorite part of the rear though, by far are the dual exhaust tips, which are chrome tipped. And I think they look absolutely fantastic, but they don't, um, they don't sound, well, well, have a listen for yourself. Overall, I love the look of the Suzuki Swift Sport. I think it's a really mean looking hot hatchback. I think it looks and plays the part really well. And even though changes really aren't plentiful at all on the outside of the Sport, I think it's a really nice, almost timeless design. Still very modern looking. But do you think they should have changed more with this new facelifted Sport? Let me know down in the comments below. I've left a poll down there because YouTube have gotten rid of the poll feature. So go down into my comment below, instructions are down there. Moving on to the interior of the Swift, and I wanna start with what the biggest differences are with this new facelift. By far the biggest additions are the addition of new safety technology. The Suzuki Swift Sport was already really well equipped in the safety department, and side note, before I had this 2021 Suzuki Swift in March, I had the 2020 for about two days before coronavirus shut everything down. So I can tell you that it did have 
really good safety technology. Adaptive cruise control was already standard. Lane departure warning was already standard. Autonomous emergency braking, it was well equipped, but it was missing a couple of pretty key features. Now you get blind spot monitoring. You also get rear cross traffic alert, and maybe a little less importantly here in pretty warm Australia, you get heated side mirrors too. And that means that this is now probably the safest car in its class, which is absolutely fantastic. The other big addition is that you now get a digital speed readout. Hallelujah. I can't believe they didn't have it in the previous car, but they've got it now. Thank God. It just means that you're not going to accidentally speed. It's easier to set your cruise control. It just makes life that little bit easier, that little bit more livable. Having just spoken about the digital speed readout, we might as well talk about the instrument cluster. I love the huge tachometer and the huge speedometer. Yes, it's not a complete digital screen that you would get as an option in the Volkswagen Polo GTI, but honestly, it's the next best thing. It's bright, easy to read. I love the red highlights and accents across the instrument cluster. It does feel a little bit tacky, but also suitably sporty. In the center, you get a LCD screen which is bright, it's colorful, and it actually shows quite a lot of fun information. For example, how much boost you're producing with the turbo and the power and torque bands. And of course, the digital speed readout. Overall, I really, really like the instrument cluster. Then there is the overall look, layout, and feel. And I really like the way that it looks with the red highlights dotted around the interior. I think that everything looks really deliberate, well-placed, fantastic. But there's no escaping the fact that the vast majority of the interior materials are shared with the base model Suzuki Swift GL, which is one of Australia's cheapest cars at $18,000. We'll get onto price soon, but at over $30,000, it's almost unacceptable. As I said, the looks are great. It's just the feel of the materials everywhere you touch just they're horrible. Next, I want to talk about the ergonomics, which are great in the Suzuki Swift Sport. The steering wheel is tilting and telescoping. You can get it into a perfect position and the seat is really adjustable. So it's fantastic. It's so easy to get a good seating position. Also, because of the boxy nature of the Suzuki Swift, it's, it's very easy to see. The visibility is really good. Everywhere you look, there's almost no blind spots. You don't get that on many small hatchbacks. You also get a USB and aux cable if your phone still has a headphone jack and a 12 volt socket. Then there are these seats. Now, to be fair, I'm a pretty big guy width-wise. These are very sport bucket seats, but they've done a good job in keeping it so that the cushions aren't too stiff. Yes, it's very body hugging, but it's not the end of the world. And that does mean that when you do turn into a corner, maybe a little bit too enthusiastically, you stay planted. My one big complaint with it though, is that there is no lumbar support. So over longer journeys, these aren't the most comfortable seats out there. But they're not the end of the world, certainly not the most uncomfortable seats I've ever sat in. And I do like the way that they look. I like that you do have the little sport logo embroidered into the seats. And the red stitching really does help to make the car feel just that little bit more sporty. It's nice, small touches like that, that matter. Now, for all my long-term subscribers out there, you know how much I care about my steering wheels, and this steering wheel is absolutely fantastic. It does not deserve to be on this car. The materials are suitably premium in the hands, really nice leather. It is a D-shaped steering wheel as well, helping it to give a bit of a sporty vibe to the car. Sorry for saying vibe, I'm a millennial, I can't help it. And then the steering wheel itself is incredibly functional. You don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel to operate many things in here. On the left, you have your media controls. On the right hand side, you have your cruise controls. Phone controls are in a bit of an odd position at the back of the steering wheel, but not the end of the world. And it's just so easy to use and live with. It's, it's really good, like unnecessarily premium for this car. What isn't amazing though, is the seven inch infotainment screen. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of a push. It goes. Anyway, the screen is functional enough. It has Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It doesn't have digital radio, but it does have built-in navigation and it's responsive to the touch. But it's not that great because the graphics are 
a little bit on the poor side and it's seven inches. That's a very small infotainment screen. And even though you have the upgraded six speaker audio system, it's not a very good audio system. The speakers are quite tinny and it just doesn't sound that great. I'm not gonna harp on it too much because at least it does come with navigation as standard and at least it is functional and responsive enough but it could be better. And then we have the air conditioning controls. You might be thinking, why is he talking about air conditioning controls? Well, they're just great. They're fantastic. Honestly, probably the best air conditioning controls in the class. They're digital, they work so well, easy, intuitive to use, and they suit the design of the dash so well. So yeah, big fan. Quickly talking about the rear seats, and there is enough leg room and plenty of headroom. It's actually surprisingly practical in the back seat. Certainly not the most comfortable place to seat with just a single rear bench back there and some pretty soft foam. And it's not very amenity appointed. There are no air vents and there's no USB charging or anything like that. It's pretty no frills. What is annoying though with the ergonomics is there's no center armrest and, and I don't like that at all. It means that you either rest your arm on your leg or on the, I don't know, it's weird, I don't like it. That's probably the first modification I would do to this car, putting in an armrest. Pretty zippy. And then moving on to boot space, it is pretty poor. It's only 265 liters of boot space, which is one of the worst in the segment. Thankfully, you can put down the rear seats, but it doesn't really feel like it helps that much. But who cares about that? How does it drive? pretty well. The engine is a 1.4 litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, oddly named the Booster Jet. It is the exact same engine that you will find in the SUV Suzuki Vitara Turbo that I reviewed. It pumps out, on paper anyway, a pretty mediocre 103 kilowatt of power and 230 newton metres of torque. But because it only weighs 970 kilos, it has one of the best torque to weight ratios in its class. The zero to 100 kilometer an hour time or zero to 62 miles per hour for you using the freedom units of measurement. It's a pretty respectable 7.39 seconds. So mentioned that in Europe, they will be getting a hybrid version of the 1.4 liter booster jet, which will bring this car to over one ton and it reduces power. So it will do zero to 62 miles per hour, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in a full second less. That's, uh, that's not that great. Now calling the Suzuki Swift Sport a hot hatch is probably a bit of an overstatement. It is more of a warm hatch that feels pretty fast. And one of the reasons it feels so fun to drive is just because it's mated to a six speed manual. Now a six speed automatic can be option, but I highly recommend you go for the manual gearbox. No, it's not the greatest shifter in the world with pretty long throws and it is very notchy, but it also puts such a big smile on your face. In terms of suspension, you do have upgraded Monroe shocks, and it's certainly not on the stiff side. In fact, it's more on the soft side, but there's nothing wrong with that because 99.99% .99 of the time you will be driving on roads and it's really comfortable. That's not to say that it's not sporty suspension. It is sporty, but it doesn't overdo it. It's really well dampened. Handling is pretty good. It's uh, it's well planted. There is a little bit more body roll than I would probably hope for, but that really is due to the fact it has slightly softer suspension. And when you take a corner, maybe a little bit too enthusiastically, there's a lot of wheel spin, a bit of body roll, but it's a whole heap of fun. Actually, my biggest complaint with how the Suzuki Swift Sport drives is the really short gearing ratios for first and second gear. It does take the joy out of flooring it quite a bit because you've got to be really careful. It's very quick to hit the rev line limiter, very quick. And it makes it a little bit frustrating. It's a, it's a bit of a frustrating experience but that doesn't take the smile off my face. And because I am a good motoring journalist, even though I've been thrashing this car around, I'm getting 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers. It's a very fuel efficient engine, amazingly so. Cheap to run. Although it does require 95 Ron premium fuel, so maybe it's not that cheap. So, should you buy the 2021 Suzuki Swift Sport? The 2021 Suzuki Swift Sport starts from 29,990 drive away. If you want the auto that does add a premium of $2,000 to 31,000. 
990 Australian dollars drive away. That's a bit steep. However, as spec here, with this flame orange paint job and black roof, the drive away price is $31,085. Now, that is quite a lot of money, I'm not gonna lie. Is the Polo GTI similarly priced and better performing? Yes. But it doesn't have this six speed manual transmission or any manual transmission for that matter. You also get so many inclusions in this car, especially the safety inclusions with this new 2021 model. The adaptive cruise control is awesome. The lane departure warning is awesome. It's a very, very functional car and actually quite well priced. So do I think it's worth it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's worth it. It drives well, it looks great. You do get a five year warranty. And in the grand scheme of new cars, it's not that expensive. So if you did enjoy the video, please do go down there and hit the thumbs up button. It really, really helps the channel, the video, everything out. And if you are new and you wanna see awesome new car reviews every single week and sometimes exclusive car reviews, definitely go down there and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you around. But anyway, guys, thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you next week.